I'm Biochar Bob, and today we're right outside of Washington, D.C., where we're finding a lot of the urban runoff is going down into the Chesapeake and adding to the already contaminated water. Biohabitats is putting in a filtration system using biochar to help clean that up before it hits the watershed. Let's check it out. Sure, I'm Joe Berg. I'm a restoration practice lead, and for this project, the project manager. Um, and I'm a, an ecosystems ecologist, graduated from the University of Maryland and really enjoy getting out and working on these kind of projects. We're a firm that specializes in ecological restoration, um, regenerative design and conservation planning, trying to just do a better job for nature and for people, trying to bring those together. So we're in southwest Washington, D.C., very urban area, about 65 percent impervious area in the watershed coming to us. Um, and this stream ultimately discharges to the Anacostia River, which is a tidal tributary to the Potomac, to the Chesapeake Bay. This is a, unfortunately an all too common problem that we have. Um, where these trees are located, uh, this channel was 22 foot deep. And that's from runoff erosion? Correct. That? Yeah, so, so right behind us is, is a, a pretty um, high density residential community, very nice single family homes, but lots of roads, not large lots, not large backyards, alleys in the back. So lots of impervious surface, all the roofs, and, and of course Washington DC was developed prior to any stormwater management regulations. So when the drainage system for these watersheds was made, it was just about getting the water off of the streets so that we didn't have flooding up there, so we didn't have standing water and basement wetness. So it was really facilitated to get the water off as quickly as possible. And at the top of this gully, we had a, a 36 inch pipe that got the water off very efficiently. Unfortunately, wash it downstream into the receiving stream where it, it degrades, you know, kills the fish, um, buries anything that lives in the, in the the rock sediment of a stream and ultimately it gets washed down into the Anacostia and into the Chesapeake Bay where it's having some really um, undesirable effects on on fish, on bivalves like the oyster, on blue crabs, basically on the the biota of the bay as well as on our ability to enjoy the bay. Because of all the impervious area, and by impervious is things like roads and roofs, all that water needs to go somewhere, so it's shooting down into here, eroding off all the sediment, putting that into the bay, which then has negative effects on the life that's there and our ability to enjoy that life. Yeah, absolutely. That's, okay. that's great. How unique is this? situation that you're solving, this problem that you're solving right now. Is this a widespread thing? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's almost at the end of every pipe. And not just in a place like Washington, D.C., but in, in Philadelphia, in New York City, in Baltimore, in Charleston, South Carolina. You name an urban area that was developed prior to, say, 1970, 1980, you have this problem at every pipe outfall. Hmm. Wow, so what, what is kind of like a global conse uh, consequence that we're going to have to face because of something like that? We've really seen a lot of literature documentation of the loss of groundwater resources. So, so these channels work like ag ditches. They lower the local groundwater, which allows higher remineralization of the organic material and the soils adjacent to those, which allows more nutrients and more non-native invasive species to predominate because they can capitalize on all that extra nutrient. So that's, that's one really significant problem. Um, so that, that's basically the loss of plant diversity in our watersheds. Um, even more important, and I think um, more broadly recognized, is the loss of the aquatic resources. When it rains, the water level comes up, because of that depth, it's got a lot of density, it can scour a lot of material, um, and that ruins the stream resource from a habitat perspective, from a water quality perspective, and from the ability for a fish or a bug to stay in that channel. Just imagine if you have um, water moving past you at 25 foot, foot per second. You, <laughs> you couldn't stand in the stream with that kind of velocity, and how do we expect a, a four inch minnow? They all get washed downstream. Tell me how what you're doing here is solving that problem. So um, the, the general approach here is we, we bring this gully back up very close to the surface 
the existing forested watershed with a, a, a porous material. And that material is like a biofilter. So it's providing better water quality as well as slowing the velocity and reducing the total volume of water. So that's an approach that has really been adopted. It's been credited with 90% total suspended solids reduction, 60% nitrogen reduction and 50% phosphorus reduction by the state of Maryland. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, this project is different because this is the first one where we're going to be using biochar. And th the notion here is this material is superior to the shredded wood. Um, we don't want to take the shredded wood out and just use the biochar but we definitely want to amend it with the biochar and the University of Maryland will be monitoring this site and looking at They've already done uh, monitoring on a number of these projects, so they have expectations. And then we'll see how much better the biochar helps these systems perform. I'm hoping that we're going to see um, better plant colonization because of better water retention. Um, we want to see improved um, denitrification. You know, we'll have a better surface area with the biochar than we have with, with you know, a, a wood chip. Sure. Um, and we think that that's going to provide um, a better opportunity for the, the, the bacteria and primarily the fungus that, is, that associates with the, the plant roots. And we're planting this site, but um, as a way to take some of the nutrients out of the stormwater, and you know, this stormwater is being delivered with um, soaps, people washing their car, salts, um, animal waste, whether it's pets or raccoons and squirrels. So there's a lot of nutrients and um, we're really looking forward to seeing how the biochar brings the performance up. Joe, thanks for having us here on this site. I think it's fantastic that, uh, that you're incorporating biochar into this and I'm really excited to see what the results are like. Yep, me too. And hopefully we'll get a lot more of these in the ground. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The unique thing about biohabitats is that when they're solving these environmental problems, they're also keeping ecology in mind. So by incorporating biochar into their filtration media, not only are they increasing the amount of things that they're taking out of the water, but they're also creating an overall better environment.